Hey guys and welcome to Grayscout Miniatures. So today I'm going to be talking about removing support from miniatures which can often be a little bit fiddly. I normally get asked quite a few questions about what order it should be done in and do I have any tips. I'm also going to be sharing a tool that I've been using as of recently that has made it so much faster, so much easier and remove some of the annoying cleanup in terms of like dirty water and stuff. So let's get on with it. So first up, I suppose the question is, what order should you remove your supports? Should you cure your resin miniatures first and then remove the supports or should you remove the supports before you cure them? What order do you do it? Ideally, you want to be removing those supports before you do any curing at all. Once those models are cured, you're going to start to see a lot more, I guess, like little warts that get left behind and it's just going to make your model look pretty messy. It also makes the cleanup of the model a lot harder once the resin's been cured because it's not that nice kind of soft, malleable feel to it. We can get a knife and just kind of scrape off some of those parts. Once it's cured, it just becomes a lot harder and the results are a, a lot, lot worse, or at least in my opinion, and it seems to be the general consensus as well. So I'm going to walk you through my process now for removing support because it can be really fiddly, especially if we are dealing with some little small miniatures. For example, like the skeletons and stuff that I've been doing or the zombies I've been doing from Highlands miniatures. When you're dealing with anything that's really small like spears or swords or anything like that, you really do run the risk of ripping those off when you're removing the supports. And I've done that time and time again and it's really, really frustrating. But this method has really, really helped me. So you've all probably heard the idea of using hot water Water, not boiling water, hot water, basically dipping your figure in there, leaving it for a little bit, and then literally the support should, in theory, peel off. And this works absolutely brilliantly for me. So how I do it is I dip them into that hot water. I tend to leave them for about 15 to 30 seconds, depending on the size of the model. I pop them out, and then a lot of the time, those supports are literally just peeling off straight away, and I don't have to do anything. Now, you need to avoid having your water too hot. So if you do start approaching boiling, you'll start to see warping, and the whole figure will just kind of bend all over the place and just tear. So that's not a good approach. So keep it just warm. You should be able to get your hands in there without burning yourself, because that just helps, you don't want burnt fingers when doing this. And then literally those supports should start peeling off. It makes it so, so, so much easier. But the problem with this approach is you always end up with this dirty water afterwards, which is basically, I guess, contaminated with resin. And then you have to go through the process of then curing that resin that's in the water and disposing of it correctly, because you do want to dispose of it correctly. If you just pour it down the sink, you are asking for disaster, let alone the impact you can have on the environment. So this approach is what really helps me. I have two children and they've grown out of drinking from bottles now. I have a bottle warmer left over. Now you can pick these up for about 20 pounds and basically what they are in a nutshell is they're this kind of little mechanical thing that has water in it and you turn a dial and it puts that water up to a really nice warm temperature. Not boiling, but not too cold. And it's just about big enough to get a couple of miniatures in there that are on their support. I've been using this and it has made such a huge difference. I hated before kind of having to heat up some water, put it into a cup or something like that, and then dispose of the water afterwards. It just added loads of extra steps and it was just frustrating. With this, I can literally just keep this kind of Tommy Tippy bottle warmer on the side, dip my figure in there, and then peel off the supports. I don't have to worry about that water. I can clear it out maybe once a month or something like that. It's probably not doing the bottle warmer any good, but I don't care, I don't need it anymore. And this serves a really, really good purpose. It's not big enough really to get any of the large models in there, so that is one downside to it. But if you're printing off a lot of miniatures, this is a really, really good and convenient way to go, and I definitely recommend it. Like I said, they normally retail for about 20 pounds you can pick them up from, and you can get bigger ones as well. And it cuts out on a lot of that waste and having to pour the water away into a container and then cure it, and all of that rubbish. You can literally just dip it in, put it aside once you're done with it, and then go back to it later on. It's a fantastic little tip. So in a nutshell is, first off, you'd obviously clean them up in IPA or whatever your cleaning solution is, and then you want to remove your supports, whether or not you do it with or without hot water, that's up to you. And then cure them after the supports have been removed and you've done your cleanup process. If you are doing this quite a lot, I definitely recommend a bottle warmer. It has made a world of difference to me. But I'd be intrigued to know as well, what do you guys do? What's your method for cleaning up? What's your method for removing supports? And do you have any sneaky little things? Like I've got this bottle warmer. Is there anything that you use that really makes a difference for you? Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But in the meantime, I'll see you soon for some more 3D printing content. Bye.